This video is going to cover formulating transportation problems in PIOMO. And in particular, this video is going to cover the sets, parameters, and the data file. And then the next video will cover the decision variables, objective function, and constraints. So as an example for this transportation problem, we're going to use the power co problem. And in this problem, we have a series of power plants that are shipping electricity to a set of cities. So like every transportation problem, we have a set of supply nodes and a set of demand nodes. And in this case, our supply nodes are our three power plants. And they, each of these supply nodes has a different supply. So plant one has the ability to send 35 million kilowatt hours of power, uh, while plants two and plants three have different supplies. And then each of our demand nodes in the power co problem is represented by a city. So each of these cities has different power requirements that need to be satisfied by our power plants. So city one, for example, requires 45 uh, million kilowatt hours of power, while city four down at the bottom only requires 30 kilowatt hours of power. And each of these supply nodes has the ability to send power to each of these cities. So for example, plant one can send power to each of these four cities. And plant two can send power to each of these four cities. And finally, plant three can also send power to each of these four cities. And as these plants are sending power to each of these four cities, there's different costs involved. So if plant one were to send power to city one, it would cost $8. Um, while if plant three was sending power to city four, it would cost $5. So depending on who's sending power to which city, the costs are different. And you can imagine that there's a cost listed on each of these arcs. So our question really becomes, which power plants should supply which city um, and with how much power? So we can formulate that um, as follows, where we have a set of supply nodes, a set of demand nodes, a cost to ship from each supply point to each demand point, uh, the total amount of supply that's available at each of our supply nodes, along with the total amount of demand required by each of our demand nodes. And then our decision variable becomes um, xij, or the number of units shipped from supply point i to demand point j. And in a transportation problem, we're interested in minimizing our total cost. And then we have a set of supply constraints that are making sure we don't send more supply from a plant than we have available. And we have a set of demand constraints that are making sure that we send enough supply to each of our cities. So we're going to start off by uh, formulating the sets and parameters of this problem. Um, so here we have the PIOMO formulation for the model file for the parameters and the sets. So we can see here that our set of supply nodes, we've um, created an element of our model called supplies and we've told PIOMO it's a set. And similarly, for our demand nodes, we've created a, an element of our model called demands and we told PIOMO that that was also a set. And then our three parameters, uh, we had a parameter for the total supply available at each supply node. So here we've created a parameter called model.s, and we've told Piomo it's a parameter. And in parentheses, we've told Piomo that we have one of these parameters for each one of our supply nodes, or each one of our elements of model.supplies. And similarly, for the demand required at each demand point, uh, we've created a parameter called model.d told PMO it's a parameter using the function param. And we have one of these um, uh, require, required demands for each one of our elements of our set model.demands. And then finally, there's this cost to ship from point, supply point I to demand point J. And this is a a two subscript parameter and we're calling it model.c and we've told PIOMO it's a parameter using the function param and we've said that the first subscript corresponds to supplies and the second subscript corresponds to our demand nodes. 
And for each of these elements of our model, we've provided a descriptive comment. And then the next part of formulating a transportation problem is creating the data file. So here, you can see that I've named this file transportation.py. This is a generic transportation model, meaning that any time I've identified a model as a transportation problem, I can use this model file right here. All I need to do is change the data file. Um, so here we're going to look at what the data file would look like for the PowerCo problem. So up top we see our PowerCo data, and I've created a data file called PowerCoData.dat. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tell the data file about our supply nodes. And at the same time that we're telling it about our supply nodes, we're also going to tell it about the supply at each of those nodes. So this is a little different from um, previous data files, and this is sort of a shortcut to be able to define both a set and a parameter that goes along with that set at the same time. And so if I was going to define these both at the same time, it would look like this, where I've started off this definition by saying param and then colon, and then I um, use the name of my set, which is supplies, followed by another colon. And then I tell it that I'm going to tell it about a parameter. This parameter's name is little s. And then once I'm done with this first line, I end it with colon equals, meaning that's all the stuff I'm going to tell you about. And then under it, I can put the data. Um, so I list my sub my supply plants, and then I list the supply that each of those plants has. And then I can do something very similar for my demand data. So I can tell PMO about all my demand points and about each of the demands that those points have all in one declaration. And that would look something like this, where I use the keyword param followed by a colon, and then I tell PMO about my demand points, um, and then I tell it how much each of those demand points requires. And then the final parameter for this model is all these costs. Um, so if I were to put those in um, PMO, we've seen this before, where we say, uh, hey, I have a param called C, and then I have to list across the top each one of my cities, and then the plants become the rows. Um, so whenever you're declaring a parameter, the first thing that you list becomes what's listed on the rows, and then the second thing that you list becomes what's listed across the column headers. And so there is our model file and our data file for the sets and parameters. And in the next video, we'll cover the decision variables, objective function, and constraints.